ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اقرارا بربوبيته وارغاما لمن جحد به وكفر كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والاكرام واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا وقرة اعيننا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله ارسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون ولو كره المشركون بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه أما بعد عباد الله فإني أوصيكم ونفسي المخطئة بتقوى الله وأحثكم على طاعته وأحذركم مبال عصيانه ومخالفة أمره فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى يقول الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty and glory and peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. And I encourage myself and you to fear no one but Allah as Allah your Lord states in the Holy Quran. All those who believe, fear Allah. Fear Allah the way he should be feared and do not die unless you are in the state of Islam. My brothers in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Quran al Kareem as Noor, as a light, wahuda, and guidance. Noor, light, and huda, guidance. A light and guidance for mankind, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us the path and lights up the path for us. And the Quran Kareem is that sacred book of Allah Azza wa Jal that mentions different aspects in the Quran. The Quran Kareem speaks about your Tawheed. And the Quran Kareem speaks about your belief. It speaks about your life, the legislations and the laws, the ahkam, how to live your life. The Quran Kareem also tells you about the past and tells you a lot about the future. And the Quran Kareem speaks about many stories of the past, not for the sake of entertaining us, not for the sake of us listening to those stories and say, it's a nice story and it's a very, very entertaining story. But the Quran Kareem mentions the stories of the previous nations for the sake of us contemplating and reflecting upon those stories. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the story of Musa, it's not a story to be said just for us to know about that story, but Allah wants us to reflect upon that story. When Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about the story of Sulaiman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to reflect upon that story. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the previous nations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to reflect upon those stories. Inna fi dhalika la ibratan albab Indeed, within those stories, there are great lessons for those who have intellect and mind to think of. That's why my brother in Islam, when you read a story of the Quran al Kareem, you need to reflect upon that story. What's the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is sending through this story. How can you reflect upon that story and have it in your life? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about His righteous servants, to have righteousness in your life. And when Allah Azza wa speaks about His disobedient servants, not to follow that path and track. And amongst those stories that I want to share with you, which is a story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shared in the Quran Kareem in Surah Al Buruj, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shared with us in many of his ahadith and traditions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes a promise, وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودِ وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, by the heavens and the stars. And who created the heavens and the stars? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah Azza wa Jal makes a promise by his creation, it's an indication to the greatness of the Creator Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودِ And the ordained day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised. وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ And I witnessed it and what they had witnessed. قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ The people of the ditch had been killed. They had been killed by who? By an oppressive and an aggressive leader and king. It all begins because of one young man. It all begins because of one young man who dedicated his life for the sake of Allah and committed to continue speaking the truth regardless who he stands in front of. This young man is not like the rest of the young men that we see these days. So sucked in with their desires, so busy with the haram, so deep in committing the sins. This young man is a young man like the rest of the young men who has desires like them but he decided to take the path that pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in return for him to be killed and even if it's return for him to die. It all begins from this young man where there used to be a king. A king that used to claim the lordship. He used to command his people to worship him. And if he hears of anyone worshipping someone beside that king, that king will persecute him or even kill him. And that king had a magician. He used to rely on him. If he needs an advice, he'll seek an advice from him. If he is in desperate matters, that he needs to know something, he'll depend on him. And we know the magicians deal with the jinn. And the jinns have extra powers than us. But they do not know ilm al ghaib as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Quran al-Kareem. And that's a different topic. So this king used to depend a lot on this magician. And this magician continued to get older and older and older so the king realized that this magician is getting old and there is no one to succeed him, there is no one to replace him. So the magician himself, the magician himself offered to the king to choose a young wise or a young switched on young man that this young man can learn magic from him and if the magician dies, this young man that the magician had taught the magic to can replace him if he dies. So the king looked around and he found a young man. And some of the scholars say 14 or 15 years old. But there's nothing authentic about his age. All we know he's a ghulam. And usually the word ghulam is referred to someone at that age, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. So the king found this young man to be taught by the magician the magic that in case the magician dies, even though he's looking to be old and is soon to die, this young man can succeed him and replace him. So the young man starts to learn magic from this magician. And every day leaving his house from his parents, goes to that magician, learns magic, then goes back home. On the way from his house to the magician and from the magician's house to his own house, to his family's house, he went past, he went past a priest. He went past a religious leader, a religious figure. They used to conceal, they used to conceal his worship and no one knows of his worship. But this young man, because every time he used to travel past the house of this priest, and when we say a priest, we are talking about a moment before the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. So we are talking about the followers of Isa alayhi salam, which what religion they used to follow? They used to follow Islam and nothing but Islam. They never used to follow Christianity. 
They followed Islam because all prophets and messengers came with the religion of Islam. So this young man, when he used to travel from his house to the magician's house and from the magician's house to his own house, he used to go past a small temple or a small house where there is a priest that used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the way of Isa alayhi salam. So this young man, he was a switched on young man. He was a smart young man. He realized that this priest or this religious figure is worshipping, he's got a form of worship different to what he's been taught from the magician. Because the magician is calling to the worship of his own king. So day by day, as he continued to travel between his house and the magician's house, he decided to enter the house of that priest. And he sat down with him. And he started to hear from him. And more often that he continued to visit that priest every day that he used to go from his house to the magician's house and go past the priest's house. On the way back from the magician's house to his house, he'll go past the priest's house until he became closer to the priest and the priest continued to teach him more about Islam and took the oath on him that he does not mention anything about what he's teaching him nor that he mentions the name of that priest. So this man is stuck between two. The magic that he's learning from the magician and Islam that he's learning from this priest or this religious figure. Day by day, his knowledge of magic increased and his knowledge of the Tawheed increased. But he was, in, he was confused in between. Which one does he believe in? One calls to the worship of the king and the other one calls to the worship of the kings of the kings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one day, when he was in a state of severe confusion between the magic of this magician and the Tawheed of this priest, he was traveling or he was walking in the market of his town. And people were scared from this big beast that stopped the path of people. Everyone just running away from this big beast. He's stuck in the middle of the street. So this young man grabbed a rock. And he said, today is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide me. To which is the haq, which is the truth? The teachings of the magician or the teachings of that priest? So he said, oh Allah, oh Allah, if what the priest is teaching me, if what this religious man is teaching me is the haq and is more beloved to you, then, oh Allah, I ask you that the moment I cast this rock on this beast, you kill this beast. And if not, you leave this beast alive, which makes me understand that you love more what the magician is teaching me. So he grabbed that rock and he threw it at that beast. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala killed the beast with that rock, which was an indication and guidance to this young man that what the priest is teaching him is the haq. What the priest is teaching him is the truth. And this is for all of us to know that when you want the haq, when you want the truth, when you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to what pleases him, Allah will always guide you. There's no such thing called I'm confused if this is the truth or not the truth. If you are sincere about seeking the truth, Allah will guide you to the truth. Like this young man. He asked Allah Azza wa Jal to guide him to the truth between what the magician is teaching him and what the priest is teaching him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him that what the priest is teaching him is the truth. So this young man dedicated his life and time to that priest. But he continued visiting the magician so the matter of him does not become disclosed. That later the, the magician started to ask him, why are you late to me? And his parents would start to ask him, why are you late to him? So he complained to the priest and the priest told him, if the magician tells you why you're late, tell him my parents delayed me. And if your parents ask you why you were late, tell him the magician delayed me. And then after the incident that took place, he went and mentioned it to the priest. That I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show me the truth and I threw this rock and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me the truth that your path is the true path. So the priest realized, or that religious figure, realized that this young man had reached to the level of righteousness and piety more than him. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show this on his hands, this man is so sincere in what he believes in. So the priest told him, oh young man, you had reached to a level higher than my level. And it looks like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had opened your heart to this religion. Therefore, Allah is going to test you a severe test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the closer he gets you to him, the more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you. 
You don't get closer to Allah Azza wa just like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to test you and test you and test you until you face Allah Azza wa and nothing in your heart except Allah. So the priest told this young man, he said, Oh young man, it looks like they have reached a status higher than my status. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test you. And if you ever get tested, be firm and never mention my name. Be firm and do not disclose what mean you had in between us. So this young man realized that this path is the true path. So he continued to get closer to Allah Azza wa and closer to Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to appear miracles on his hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to appear miracles on the hands of this young man. That he started to cure the ill. And if someone is blind, he'll just wipe over him by the name of Allah Azza wa Give him his sight back and his sight comes back. And if someone is in a severe illness, he'll wipe over him by the name of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him recovery. And everyone starts to hear about this young man and the miracles that appear on his hands. And the first condition they used to take from anyone that wants to recover from him is that he believes in the Lord that this young man believes in. One day, one of the close associates to the king, he was blind. He heard about what this young man does. So he went and took a lot of presents and money and went to visit this young man. And he said, I heard that you bring the sight of those who are blind. And he's all the wealth to you, but bring my sight back. He said, I don't want anything from you. Believe in the Lord that I worship and I'll bring your sight back by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, this man that used to be in the company of the king and used to be close, associated to the king, he said, I believe in your Lord. So this young man, Wiped over his eyes and he said, By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bring his sight back so this man starts to see again. And now this man doesn't believe in the lordship of the king. He believes in the lord of this young man. Because this king, his mate and his friend and he's been with him for a very long time, could not bring his sight. How could he claim the lordship when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do whatever he wants? In Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. So one day, this associate to the king, after many years sitting down with his king, Blind, can't see. This time he goes and visits the king and the king realizes something new about this man. He could see. So he told him, what did you bring? Like, what, what happened? What did you do? Like who brought your sight back to you? So he said to him, there's a young man. There is a young man that he brings the, he, he, he brings the sight to those who are blind and he gives recovery to those who are ill. So the king said, who's this young man? So he asked around, it turned out to be the young, that young man that the king had nominated to be taught by the magician. So he brought that young man and he told him, oh young man, it looks like that you've been taught magic very well, that you even exceeded the level of magic than the magician that taught you. So this young man in front of me said, la, 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 no. Everything that you see and everything you heard, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the king said, is there a lord beside me? So the young man said, yes, there's Allah Azza wa Jal. And his associate also said, yes, there's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are you? I've been with you for years and you could not even bring my sight back. And this young boy brought my sight back by the will of, the will of his Lord. So the king started to torture his associate. And then he started to torture that young man for him to disclose where did he learn all this from? At the end, that young man mentioned the priest that he was taught under his hands. So the king brought the priest. And he killed the priest in front of that young man. He's saying to the priest, believe in me or I'll kill you. So the priest said, no, I believe in Allah. So the priest killed him in front of the young man. Then he brought his friend, that blind friend that later on started to see because of the will of Allah Azza wa Jal through, the hand, through the hands of this young man. And he said to him, believe in me as your Lord. So that, that associate of the king, he said, no, there is no Lord except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the king killed him. Now, he wanted to torture that young man. He wants to benefit from him. So he wants to turn him towards him so he could become becomes his advisor, associate, better than killing him. So he started to threaten him and threaten him. And that young man, young, young, we're talking about 14, 15 years old, was so firm and strong in front of the king, even that the king is threatening him to kill him. So the king sent his soldiers with that young man saying to him, take him to the peak of the mountain and threaten him. That if he does not turn back to my worship, you throw him and cast him from the peak of the mountain and kill him. So they took that young man, went to the highest peak on the peak of that mountain and told that young man, the king is saying to you to worship him 
or else we're going to throw you out of that mountain. We're going to throw you from the peak of the mountain and die. So this young man said, Oh Allah, I ask you that you protect me from these people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard the call of his servant that sacrificed him for his sake and Allah shook the mountain, made all the soldiers fall down, die and he came back walking alive to the king. Now the king was amazed. He stood. This young man could have fled. He could have run away. But he wants to send a message. What's that message? La ilaha illallah. There is no God except Allah. The message is, there is no God except Allah. No one of worthy of worship to be except, uh, no one is worthy to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the kid, that young man, comes again in front of the king, thinking the king that his soldiers managed to get the best out of him, kill him, or brought him back, that he'll worship him. So the kid comes, this young man comes alone with no soldiers. So the king says, where's my soldiers? So he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected me from them. Always Allah, not me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal does whatever he wants and Allah can do whatever he wants. So the king brought another group of soldiers, asked them to take him in the middle of the ocean and threaten him to worship him or else throw him and let him drown in the middle of the sea. So this kid went on that boat with a group of soldiers from that king in the middle of the sea. This kid says, Oh Allah, I ask you to protect me from them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a wave on that boat, turned it around, all the soldiers died, and this king, uh, this young man was, uh, uh, this young man survived by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he went to the king once again to stand in front of him. Now the king is shocked. Who is he dealing with? What type of a young man is he dealing with? So this young man had a message. He wanted to prove something to him and to everyone that there is no God except Allah. So this young man says to him, if you want to kill me, you need to do what I tell you. If you want to get rid of me, you need to do what I tell you. First of all, gather the entire town. Bring all the people of the town and crucify me on a tree. And then take an arrow from my arrow bow and then aim towards me and say, by the Lord of this young man. And let it release the arrow. Then shoot me with the arrow. So the king said, okay, I want to get rid of this young man, not knowing what this young man is planning. So the king went and crucified him on a tree, took an arrow from his arrow bar, gathered the entire city, and he aimed towards that young man to shoot him with the arrow, saying, by the Lord of this young man, and let go of the arrow, and went through the heart of this young man, and he died. Who heard that? The entire city heard that. So they said, we'll all believe in the Lord of the young man. Subhanallah, he had a message. A young man wanted to call to Allah Azza wa Jal and prove that there is no God except Allah. So even if it was for his own soul to be taken away, but save thousands of people from the worship of this creation to the worship of the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the entire city, 70,000, it's been narrated, 70,000. 70,000 people of that town turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believed in the Lord of that young man after they saw everything with their own eyes and heard what had been happening in the past. So the king, he had one problem, so he had now 70,000 problems. He had one person disbelieving in him, now he's got 70,000 people disbelieving in him. So he commanded his soldiers to dig up ditches and fill it up with fire and cast anyone who refuses to turn back to the worship of this king. So he, his soldiers went and dug up ditches that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Qutila ashab al the people of the ditch were killed. And naridat al waqud in a fire inside that ditch, bringing one after the other. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ There was no problems with these people except they believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. The king had no issue with them except they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he brought 70,000 people, casting one after the other. Who do you worship? They say, we worship the Lord of that young man. Throw him into that fire. One after the other, one after the other, until they brought a mother carrying her own baby with her own arms. And then they told her, who do you worship? So she hesitated, fearing on her young baby. So Allah azza wa jal made that baby speak to his mother and say, Oh mother, continue on the path of this young man. You are in the haq, and I'll see you in the paradise. Ikhwani, Iman, belief, strong, firm belief in the heart. Nothing shakes it. 
Even if they are threatened to be killed, even if they are threatened to be casted in the fire, even if their own children are killed, whatever happens, this is the believer. Nothing shakes him. Nothing takes him away from what he believes in. Nothing turns him away from Islam. No foolish things on the surface of this earth. No desire, no haram. A believer is a believer because he believes in the truth. And when the, in truth, when the truth enters the heart, it goes so deep that nothing can break away from your heart. Where are our young men these days? Where are our young men these days? Haram takes them away. Drugs takes them away. Sex takes them away. Anything takes them away. Clubs take them away. Where is your iman in your heart? Reflect upon the iman of this young man. Reflect upon the iman of this young man. That he was threatened to be killed once and twice and three times. And he continued to be firm and strong. Nothing takes him away from Allah. And this is the believer. Nothing takes him away from Allah. Nothing takes away from your Lord because Allah Azza wa Jal is number one in your life and everything comes secondary. Everything comes after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if it's about compromising anything to please Allah, I would never ever compromise anything to displease my Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I am his servant. He is my Lord and he is my creator. I am his creation and he has all the rights upon me. A young man. A young man, 70,000 of them followed him and all continued to be firm in their belief. And this is the believer. This is the belief that enters your heart. When the true belief enters the heart, it becomes so deep in your heart that nothing can rip it away, rip it away from your heart. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر أشكره وهو الذي وعد المزيد لمن شكر وأصلي وأسلم وأبارك على النبي المعتبر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ما brothers in Islam once again I say these stories are not stories to be told so we could entertain ourselves. Are not stories to be told so we could enjoy ourselves by listening to it. These are stories for us to reflect upon. These are stories for us to know the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us. These are stories for us to reflect our status with the status of those who truly believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and truly sacrificed for Allah. We might truly believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. We have the true belief. But do we truly sacrifice to Allah? Do I truly sacrifice to Allah Azza wa Jal? Do I give for Allah Azza wa Jal what he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks from me? These are stories for us to comprehend and think about. And look what pe these people done and offered for Islam. And what these people sacrificed for Islam. And what these people gave up for Islam. And then I ask myself that question. What have I sacrificed for Islam? What have I given up for Islam? What did I do for this deen? A young man gives up his life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 70,000 followers of him give up their life just to prove the truth. What do I give for Islam? What do I offer for this deen? What do I do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I struggle with myself to pray to Allah. I struggle with myself to leave what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden me. I struggle with myself to stop the haram. I struggle with myself to do something just please Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why my brother in Islam, reflect upon those stories. Inna fi dhalika al-ibratan li ulil al-bab. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, indeed, in these stories, and such stories like these stories, these are great examples, stories for you to comprehend and look into and realize that if these people did it, you can do it. If these people sacrificed, you can sacrifice. If these people gave, you could give. If these people managed to keep themselves distant away from what displeases Allah Azza wa Jal and to keep themselves closer to Allah, then you can. Remember, you can. Don't look at it as them, but also look at yourself as me, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires from me. 
عباد الله اتقوا الله فيما أمر وانتهوا عما عنه نهى وزجر وحافظوا على حضور الجمع والجماعات واعلموا أن الله أمر بأمر عظيم عميم بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد <تصفيق> ورد اللهم عن الصحابة الكرام وعن التابعين و متابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقوا لكل خير ومن أراد بهم غير ذلك فخذوا أخذ عزيز مقتدر لا تبق منهم ولا تذر اللهم انصر إخواننا في كل مكان انصر إخواننا في سوريا انصر إخواننا في سوماليا انصر إخواننا في بورما انصر إخواننا في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصرهم على أعدائهم وعدوهم اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك يا ربنا قريب مجيب للدعوات اللهم اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انا نسالك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى نسالك من خير ما سالك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم انت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا لصلاتكم يرحمكم الله تقدم تقدم